Hi there. I'm Casey, owner and artist of Yaya May Galveston. And today we're going to talk about patterns. And we're going to talk mostly about um, how we use our patterns, store our patterns. And um, I have some hints, some things that I do that help me. And I'm going to share those with you. And so if you're a pattern user, uh, whether it be for clothing or quilts, um, this uh, might be helpful to you. So I'm going to share what I do and um, see if any of that is of use to you. And if you have some hints for using and storing and copying patterns, I'd love for you to share them in the comments of this video. So I'm going to turn you first to the work table so you can see what we're doing. I have a pattern and this is a pattern that I uh, am getting ready to use. I have a little notes that I keep on my patterns. Um, it has several variations and I am changing it up it has variations for little ruffles and all kinds of treatments and also for a separate band it has a neck facing but it also has a separate band and then it has bands for the arms well i'm going to use the neck facing but i'm not going to use the bands and so um i'll probably use this pattern very often because it's I, I like it just a simple pattern because i use some um, busy fabrics and i um, use a simple pattern so the fabric won't hide details like these ruffles what i do is when i get a pattern i find the pieces that i want to use and i copy them and so these are the pieces that I've copied. And when I copy the pattern, I use this Nifty Difty. Uh, there's a girl on YouTube. She is a home ec teacher. And I watched a couple of her videos and her best tip for me was this she of course since she has um, a lot of students and they use the same pattern so they have to trace their patterns and so uh, the tracing paper you get at joann's or other sewing outlets they're kind of pricey and she found that the rolls that the doctors use on their examining tables <laughs> They're strong, they're thin, so you can trace through them, and um, they're cheap. So, I ordered some. And if you order it by the roll, they're like $6 a roll. If you order it like 12 rolls, it's like $2 a roll. So, of course, I ordered the 12 rolls, <laughs> and I've got all this paper, and I'm still working on the first roll. So, um, but I'm um, tracing more patterns since I'm sewing more now, and I'm tracing more patterns. So, this is being used up rather quickly, and, um, and, and then, of course, I'll share. <laughs> So, uh, I'm a chisholm through and through. <laughs> when we ever we do a hobby, we do it up really big and buy any and everything in our path. <laughs> so, anyway. But anyway, this is a great tip. It's thin. And I can copy my, put my pattern down on the work table. And I'll show you. And I put the pattern down on the work table. And then I'll, of course, you want to smooth it out. Roll this over it. Let me do 
it long ways so you can see better. And then you can see through the pattern, through the paper, and I can trace the pattern. Now, the reason I'm tracing patterns more today is most of the patterns are multi-sized. And if you're like me, your body changes through the years, whether it's weight gain, weight loss, or you just get wider as you get older, whether you gain weight or not. <laughs> so... I trace my patterns uh, instead of cutting them. And also, I wear like a size, the size of this part of the pattern, the upper part of the pattern is, I use like a size 10, and then when I get to the waist, then I uh, expand out to the hips to a size 14 because I'm pear-shaped. And, uh, I trace my pattern and I can trace that into the pattern that I'm making, the copy that I'm making, and then the pattern is set up for me and me alone. Um, when I trace the pattern, I trace not only the outline, but all of the markings the uh, arrows that indicates grain line. Um, I changed this one up. It's supposed to have a front seam because it has all those little ruffly things and all that go with it, but I'm not gonna do that, so I'm gonna do mine on the fold. So I changed my markings to indicate that. I um, drew the dart and the um, little notch notches and then I also, and this is real important when you trace a pattern, you want to also write the number of the pattern. So I use Simplicity 1886. The number of the pattern piece, this is 1B, that it's the front, and that I'm gonna cut. This says cut two, but since I'm cutting it on the fold, I changed that up. So on my pattern piece, I did all of that. I did all of that on mine. And without something, let me put something behind it because it's hard to see otherwise. So I wrote all of that information on the pattern there's the grain line, but there's also, I changed it because I'm going to put mine on the fold. There's my dart. There's my notches. So everything that I'm going to need from that pattern, I put onto my pattern piece that I traced. And then something else that I do when I have all my pattern pieces together, I'm gonna make, I'll probably make several of these. And so I put these, they're folded a little smaller because it's fewer pieces than the whole pattern. And I put them in a little separate plastic bag and I stick that in with the pattern when I put the pattern away. So I'll put everything back up into the pattern and I'll put this little bag in there with my trace pattern in it. And then I write a note to myself as to what it is. The pattern number that it's a sleeveless top size 10 with the side seams tapered to size 14 and that it's plain, no enhancements, no neckband. So that's a note to me that this is my plain pattern without all the embellishments and uh, markings for the embellishment. Another thing I do, whether I'm tracing a pattern 
are uh, going to use the pattern itself. When I'm through with it, no matter how it's folded when I get it, I fold it with the pattern piece number on top, telling me what it is. So this is the front. This is pattern piece 1B, and it's the front. And so I will fold it so that information is on top. And I do that with all the pattern pieces. There's a sleeve. So when, if I decide I want to use some of those enhancements, I don't have to unfold every pattern piece because I'll be able to find it. There's an armhole facing. If that's all I'm looking for, the information is on top the way I folded it. And um, I'll be able to find it right away without unfolding every pattern piece looking for that one pattern piece. So that is truly invaluable <laughs> for me. Another hint that will help you when you get ready to do, uh, to make something from a pattern is on your instructions there are, you know, pictures of the variations. And then there's also a picture of the pattern pieces and a list of what each piece is. So you can look on this and determine before you start looking through all those pattern pieces, what pattern pieces you're looking for. 1B, 1C, 1D. And if you have your pattern pieces folded with a pattern piece number on the outside, you'll be able to find those pieces quickly. And that is huge for me because I don't like to waste a lot of time. <laughs> and so there it is. The pattern is back in the envelope. Everything's folded so the pattern piece number is on top. My little plastic bag with the pattern pieces that I'm going to use often are in there, labeled properly, so I'll know exactly what's in the bag. Now, here is a pattern that I made from a top that I had and that I wore it so much <laughs> that the fabric was getting pretty thin and awful looking. <laughs> so I made a pattern out of it. And um, so that's what I've got on today. I made, I used that to make a pattern to make this. And the one I wore last week, the yellow one, was made from that. Now, mine didn't come out exactly like theirs. But that's okay. I like it. It did come out. It's pretty much. Yeah. I thought I had made a boo-boo. But I didn't. It's, it's gathered right there, and I did that. And so when I made those pattern pieces, I used the tracing paper and I made my pattern pieces. And uh, then I fold them up and I put them in here and I took a picture of the item that I made the pattern piece from. And then when I marked my pattern pieces, I marked where I wanted the elastic to start and end. This is the front of a Liz top, elastic front piece, size KC, <laughs> cut one on the fold. And so uh, this one I broke my rule and I didn't uh, fold it with the numbers out. 
because that's all it is, is to make that one top in that one size. So what else we got? Here's one. Now here, I'm gonna um, ask for suggestions from you. This is a pattern that I got offline. So it's a PDF pattern that I print on my printer and it prints out like 24 pages and then you tape them together. And they have markings on them so you know where to tape them together. So they'll have these red markings and you put the red marking on this page on top of the red marking on this page and then you tape them together. And uh, since it's on printing paper, it's real thick and unruly. So I'm thinking the next time I do this, I'm gonna see, I don't even know, do they still make onion skin typing paper? You remember we, we had that in high school, we liked, because it was erasable. <laughs> and um, so I'm gonna see if I can find a thinner paper to print off my um, patterns on so they won't be so thick and unruly. So after I got them put together, taped together, and then cut apart the pieces, because when you get them, you're still gonna have pattern pieces, part of a top and part of an arm piece on the same page and then they're all taped together and then you cut apart the pattern like you would with a regular commercial pattern, you know, several pieces on one big sheet of tissue and you cut those apart. And same thing when you print a PDF pattern. Um, so once I got them all cut apart and everything, it's this big wad of paper because the uh, printing paper is so thick. And so I'm going to look to see if I can find a thinner paper to use, you know, like onion skin or something like that. So this won't be so thick. It's thick and it's harder to use to uh, cut out the pattern, I think. I prefer this. So I uh, traced my pattern off on the tissue paper. And so it's easier to use. And I put that in the bag and then I took a picture of the pattern and placed that on the front of the bag. And here's what I used for my bags for uh, <laughs> H-E-B, Texas Tough. Uh, these are quart size bags and uh, They'll pretty much fit in a quart size bag. You just have to fold them a little smaller. And um, they'll fit in that bag. And if you fold it, you can still uh, squeeze the air out and you can still seal them. And uh, they're protected from dust and all that jazz. And then I take my patterns and I have them in these shoe boxes. And the taller the shoe box, the better. And then I have them separated into closed tops. These are all the top, this is all tops. And then I have one that is closed sets, which is for suits, pants suits, skirt suits. Um, when they have, uh, when they're not called wardrobes, when it's a combination pattern that has tops and pants and shorts and skirts and, and so it's basically a wardrobe. And uh, that is what I keep in my one called sets. And then I have one called dresses. I have one exclusively for dresses. And, and then I have another couple of bunches of them 
uh, that I have home deck and then handbags. And I have handbags and accessories, uh, home deck and accessories. And I have a separate box for those. And when I keep them like this, I can thumb through them easily. I can thumb through them to find the pattern that I want. Uh, here's another PDF pattern. That raglan sleeve, oh, I like that so much. And then here's another one that uh, I made one of these. I made the plain one. And so the pattern pieces for that I traced and have in a separate little bag in there. So when I go to make it again, I'll just put that out and it's all done for me. So that is my contribution. <laughs> and then these are ones that I drafted. There's a little girl online. Oh my, uh, what is it called? Create, what is it? Thoughtful Creativity is the name of her. She's got a YouTube channel, Thoughtful Creativity. And she is self-taught, and she makes a lot of the tops that have the little cap sleeves, so it's all one piece. So your pattern is two pieces, uh, the front piece and the back piece, and it has cap sleeve. And... Um, a real cute little girl, and she's got some really good ideas. And so I drafted, a, and she tells you how to draft the pattern for your own size. And so I've done a couple of those. And um, I've, yeah, I've got a couple of those that I like. I need a little more um, fitting to mine. Um and so, uh, but that's, you know, I made the patterns and then I mark on the pattern a separate sheet of paper what the pattern is. And this is uh, a basic loose top with a drop sleeve, gathered neck. Uh, and then I made a note, it was way too big for me. And I think that's because I used a fabric that wasn't drapey enough. If I used a drapier fabric, I think it would be prettier. But I'm, I make notes. This is a long sleeve t-shirt with a drop sleeve. It's for stretch and you can make without the long sleeve. So just make notes on your patterns that will help you remember. Because if you're like me, since I'm not 24 anymore, <laughs> I don't remember everything. So I have to make lots of notes. And, um, Let's see what else. When I cut out a pattern, I use lots of pins. Uh, I also, um, you, can, you can also use pattern weights. You can use washers as pattern weights. Just anything that is flat so you can still uh, maneuver around the pattern to cut it. If it's a slinky material, I use... Um, a rotary cutter because I found that if I use my scissors as the fabric is lifted it shifts the slinky fabric does like this I this is very slinky it's a jersey like and uh, so I used a rotary cutter to cut it out and I use lots of pins to hold it down <laughs> so the material wouldn't shift and then I cut it with a rotary cutter. Um, what else? I also use my clips, my little clips. I use those to hold, uh, if something is cut on the fold, I put the pattern on the fold and then I use the clips to hold that side of the pattern. So I don't I don't have to pin that. I use these to hold that because that's gonna be the edge of your fabric since it's folded over and your pattern goes on the fold. So I just use the clips to hold the fold pieces in place and then pin the rest of the pattern so the fabric doesn't shift on me because I've been working with knits and 
slinky fabric slightly, which is new for me. I never did that before. And so um, that was, um, that's one of the things I'm trying to grow and get better in my sewing endeavors. <laughs> and I'm trying new things. And so working with slinky fabric is very new for me, just like the bias um, trim is new for me. And um, now I love it. That's all I want to do is use bias trim. Because <laughs> I can use my cover stitch machine on that uh, when I'm ready to secure it. And um, so I think that is going to be it today as far as patterns are concerned. Um, just some helpful hints in getting to the pattern piece you want and storing them and how to use them and how to trace on them. So um, I hope that's helpful to you. If you have some helpful hints on how to um, use your patterns, copy your patterns, um, store them, uh, that would be helpful to me and to the rest of us. Uh, please share that in the comments. Um, please comment and share and like this video on Facebook, and I'll also put it on YouTube. And so uh, if you watch on YouTube, uh, please uh, comment and share. And uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me here on Facebook. And also check out my Etsy shop. I've had uh, some recent activity uh, in my Etsy shop, uh, which makes me very happy. <laughs> and uh, I sold one of my favorite bags, the one that had the little two square, the messenger bag with lots of little squares and squares within squares, uh, patches on it. It's one of my favorite bags and some young lady bought it and I, I just hope she's so pleased with it. And then I've been selling some patterns. So check out my Etsy shop. Like I said, I have four new bags and one is just outstanding. It's made from khaki and red jeans. It's kind of a stripe with some cover stitching on it and, and this fabulous buckle. It looks so good. Anyway, check out my Etsy shop, yayamedgalveston.etsy.com. And then, of course, on Facebook and uh, YouTube, it's Yaya Made Galveston. So check those out. Uh, come back and see us. And uh, stay safe. I'll see you next week.